Hey guys, my name is Casey Heller or KK Resin Art, and today I'm going to show you how to create a floral preservation piece using Crafted Elements Deep Pour Silicone Molds. Today I'm going to be using Super Clear Epoxy Liquid Glass Formula. So this is for deep pour and it can be poured up to two to four inches thick. This resin is a two to one mixing ratio. Just make sure whatever um, casting resin you use, make sure to read the instructions thoroughly to make sure you're mixing it right. This needs to be mixed for at least five minutes and the sides scraped really well to make sure everything's thoroughly incorporated. Okay, so after we've stirred everything, we are now gonna pour our first layer of resin. Um, you don't want this layer to be very deep. It needs to be like one fourth to one half inch deep because this is gonna hold your flower placement. Um, you're gonna wait and wait for this layer to dry and then you can start pouring your layers. So right now I'm getting the bubbles out of the resin I just poured with a heat gun. Don't use blow torches or super hot setting on your heat gun in these silicone molds. So now we're gonna start placing the flowers. Um, right now I'm going around the edges to get rid of any extra bubbles will sometimes cling to the edges but the deep cast is a great resin for this because it has great bubble release but it does take um, up to 36 hours to dry so between each layer you have to wait 36 hours or more i always check it but it's usually around the 36 hour mark so i like to lay down the background of my floral design first so here we're adding a big leaf Make sure it's pressed down into the resin because you want it to stay where you're placing it. And then we're going to go in and add our roses. This design, I kind of winged it, but other designs, if you're doing a layout for a customer, you'll want to do a mock-up design before in your mold before you add any resin or anything and make sure they approve the design before you go in to add your resin, because once it's in here, um, it, there's no going back. So I like to add my bigger pieces on top of the background and then fill any empty spaces with my smaller flower or any extra filler flowers your bouquet might have. Okay, so it's been 36 hours and our flower bottom layer is now cured and our flowers are secure in their places. So now we'll, we will begin to pour our clear coat layers on. Um, I was doing layers of about one and a half inches thick, which ended up being about 48 ounces per layer. I just feel more comfortable pouring in layers that thick. You could probably do thicker layers if you desire, but I, I just like doing the thinner layers because that way I can really get in between and pop any bubbles that may pop up um, and then just keep a better eye on my project. So I ended up doing this about four different times to complete this cube. So between each layer, you're going to wait 36 hours before you pour. Always touch your resin to make sure it's cured on top um, before pouring your next layer. So here we're scraping out all the resin. And after you've poured into your flowers, I like to go down and check it after it's been a few hours because sometimes bubbles pop up um, from the flowers, especially there'll be air bubbles that will kind of seep up to the top even after you've used your heat gun. So here, gently use your heat gun if you have exposed flour here too, make sure you're not blasting the heck out of them. But you just wanna go in there enough, especially against the wall lining of your mold there is where the bubbles will kind of creep up from time to time. So really make sure you're focusing on those edges. Okay, so we repeated the layering step about four times or as many as it takes to get your flowers completely covered. And now it's time to demold. The Crafted Elements silicone molds are extremely easy to demold. I'm barely using any force at all. My project is literally just popping right out, as you can see. So here we're gonna pop this out. 
Our next step will be to tape the edges and put a top coat on. So here we're popping this out. And there you have a beautiful clear cube. Crafted Elements has a really nice shiny side too. A lot of other molds don't have that, so you don't need to flood the entire cube. I just like to flood coat the top. So here I'm doing a quick sanding because I had a tiny little piece of flour that was exposed. So I'm just sanding that little bit off. Um, make sure, I try to use as fine a grit um, sandpaper as possible because you don't want any of those squiggle lines to show. Um, so here we are just sanding that little bit of flour that was exposed. And now we're doing the taping process. I like to bring the tape up as high as possible to the top, but not overlapping. Um, I like the tape just to be like flush with the top of my project. So here we're going to burnish the edges because you don't want the resin to seep through. We just want to make the, the top coat nice and shiny here. So we're just adding some tape. I always add a little extra just in case. And then you're gonna to wanna to bring it down past the bottom. You're gonna to want it to hang over the edge a little bit because if resin does drip down the edges, you don't want it to get on the bottom of your cube. So you want the tape to go past the bottom so the resin will just drip, you'll guide the resin to just drip right off the sides. And also when it comes time to top coat, I like to elevate my block either on like a couple little Dixie cups or you could really use anything. Just make sure it's elevated um, and not just like sitting directly on your pouring table. So then that way the resin will just drip right off the tape and onto your table and make sure you have plastic underneath as well. Okay, so now this step we are shining up our sanded top coat here. I'm using tabletop epoxy to do this top coat. You won't want to use casting for this process. Casting isn't meant for top coating. So we're just, I like to really kind of push it in with my fingers with obviously wear gloves and make sure you're wearing proper respirator and whatnot too. But um, really get it in those areas where we got it with the sander because we want this to be nice and shiny. So I like to rub it in first and then pour more epoxy over the top to really get that flood coat over all the edges nicely. Sometimes you might need one or two layers of tabletop on top. It just really depends on the project. Okay, so the step, our top coat is now dry and we're getting our tape off of our cube. I like to really heat the resin and the tape with my heat gun. I use it on the highest setting. Obviously, don't burn your tape, but um, it helps the tape come off better and help unstick the glue a little bit. Um, so it should just kind of come off seamlessly. If you hit an area that's a little harder to get off, just hit it with your heat gun again. And I like to use, if you are using a paint scraper, just be careful to only use it on the taped part and not scratch your resin piece. And another tip for this process, once you do get all the tape off, if there is any sticky residue left over, Goo Gone works really good to get that off. It will come right off your resin piece. And here's our final resin piece made with Crafted Elements silicone molds. And if you wanna do other preservation pieces, they have other awesome shapes that are deep pour molds, just like the one I used here. Um, that will leave the sides nice and shiny, so that means less work for you. Thank you for watching, and please like, comment, and share this video. Let us know what you think. My name is Casey, or KK Resin Art, 
and these molds are done by Crafted Elements. Thanks!